So next we're going to scan for the rectus sheath block, which is a really useful block for midline abdominal analgesia. Again, I'm using a high frequency linear probe and I've um, opted to put on the virtual convex mode in order to give us the best field of view. The right hand side of the screen is lateral, the left hand side of the screen is medial. The first thing I'm going to do is bring the probe way out laterally. As we do that, I want, to, I want you to appreciate that we've got three muscles very clearly evident on the screen over here. Most superficially, you've got the external oblique, then a very thick, normally thick internal oblique, and then a much thinner transversus abdominis muscle. Deep to those muscles, you can see the peritoneum and you can see bowel content moving within there. Um, and having started off laterally on the probe, I've used that to orientate myself. Uh, more superficial to that, is a very thin layer of adipose tissue. And you can tell our, our, our model is nice and thin, so not too much adipose tissue there. But you can often use identifying those three muscle layers as a way of orientating yourself. If, you're, uh, if you have a patient who's blessed with a little bit more adipose, that's a nice orientating landmark. So having identified those three muscles, I'm now gonna slide the probe towards the midline. As we slide the probe towards the midline, you'll see a very obvious internal oblique muscle and at this point, right in the middle of the screen, we've got an ultrasound landmark that correlates with the linear semilunaris, which is the lateral aspect of the rectus abdominis muscle on this hand side. I'm going to slide the probe even more towards the midline now. And now I'm scanning over the body of the rectus abdominis muscle. I'm going to direct my probe straight down. Uh, and as I do that, I want you to appreciate you've got very natural appearance of the rectus abdominis muscle, so typical muscle appearance. But deep to the muscle, there are two white lines that are visible on the screen. The first white line uh, is the posterior rectus sheath. And deep to that is the transversalis fascia and the peritoneum together. So you get this very obvious posterior rectus sheath, so that the posterior border of the muscle associated with the transversalis fascia and the peritoneum. So just to orientate yourself even more, I'm going to slide the probe towards the midline. So as we go over the rectus abdominis muscle, which we're scanning in cross section, we get to a point when it's deficient. And right now we're scanning over the linear alba. This is the midline of the rectus muscle. So right over here, this deficiency is a linear alba. And as we scan to the lateral side, we're now onto the rectus abdominis muscle on the contralateral side. When you're performing a rectus sheath block, you need to put local anesthetic on both sides because there's bilateral innervation of the midline. But now we're going to go back past that other rectus abdominis muscle and come back onto the rectus on the side that we're looking at. Now, why did I make a point of highlighting out this tram line appearance of the posterior rectus sheath and the transversalis fascia and peritoneum? That's because as you slide the probe down, if you focus on that posterior aspect of the muscle, as I slide the, slide the probe down the abdominal wall, there'll become a point where there is no posterior rectus sheath. So actually over here, as we get to this point, all you can see behind the muscle is one line. And that is because at this point, below what's called the arcuate line, all of the fascia of the abdominal muscles passes anterior to the rectus abdominis muscle, and there's no posterior rectus sheath. So if you were to deposit local anesthetic at the posterior aspect of the muscle here, there's a possibility that you may actually put your needle into the peritoneum. In fact, you can see a rather large circular pulsatile uh, blood vessel deep down in, uh, in our model's abdomen here. The other thing I want to point out here are the inferior epigastric artery and the accompanying veins. So as you scan further down the abdominal wall, you see those inferior epigastric blood vessels, which clearly you want to avoid when performing a block. So whenever you're performing a rectus sheath block, you want to be above the arcuate line. And as I scan up, you'll actually see those epigastric vessels pass within the substance of the muscle. So I'm gonna go further up until I very clearly see that, there we go, we've got, at that point now, we've got two uh, lines below the rectus abdominis muscle. So that's where you've got a posterior rectus sheath and, a, and the transversalis fascia. So here, you would bring your needle in either from lateral to medial. You can see as I'm pushing on the skin over here, you can see the indentation. And your aim is to inject local anesthetic between the posterior aspect of the muscle and the posterior rectus sheath. It's often easy as you, as you bring your needle in from lateral to medial to start injecting local anesthetic before you get to where you think you are to avoid your needle being down here. And when you're in the right place, you get a very obvious appearance of local anesthetic um, 
between the muscle and the posterior rectus sheath. The only other thing I want to show you is that some people decide or opt to do, the pro to do their nerve block or to cite the catheters with the alternate orientation. So I'm going to take that transverse scan, I'm going to rotate the probe through 90 degrees. So at this point now, I'm scanning along the long axis of the muscle. You can still see on the bottom of the screen the posterior rectus sheath and the transverse salus fascia. And as I slide north, you can see here we're coming up to one of the interdigitations of the six pack. We'll go up to the next level. So here you can see the, um, the rectus sheath muscle in long axis as we're scanning up and down. So now having generated a long axis view of the rectus abdominis muscle, this is a nice way that you can direct a catheter if you want to use it for post-optive analgesia or after a laparotomy. You can see as I go to the superior aspect of the rectus abdominis muscle, if I was to bring my needle in from the superior aspect, you can see the, the ab abdomen moving there. You could pass your needle through the superior aspect of the muscle and direct your local anesthetic between the muscle and the posterior rectus sheath. So coming in from this area right the way over here, and it will allow you to spread local anesthetic along the long axis of the muscle. So if you're going to perform this block, about 20 mils of local anesthetic on this side and 20 mils of local anesthetic on that side should get a nice spread. So that's a long axis view of the rectus muscle. If I rotate the probe through 90 degrees, that's a short axis view. Here's the midline, the linear alba, and as I slide laterally, we go past the linear semilunaris and meet the abdominal wall muscles.